town if you guys give me one more ticket because I'm working my butt off <laughs> for you guys to tax me. <laughs> I swear. Christopher, you left me with the empty. I'll pop it for you. Oh, you're such a gentleman. I really will. Anyways, but now we are on our way to get my lashes done at the Lash Room in Simpsonville with my friend Tish who owns the Lash Room. She is amazing. I have been to people all over the U.S. because I travel so much. Um, every once in a while I have to go to someone that's not Tish and I get very angry because no one ever does as well a job as Tish does. And I will let Tish kind of, um, I'll ask her some questions while she's doing my lashes. There's things that I already know, but that way you guys can like know how to select the right um, lash extension specialist for if you want to go get your lashes done. And the reason I wanted to make this video is because I have at least 10 people a day when I go out ask me, oh my gosh, how did you get those lashes? And I'm like, girl, you can pay for them, you can have them too. It's not just genetics. So, <laughs> so I wanted to make this video so that you guys could see how to choose the correct lash specialist if you guys are interested in getting your lashes done. Vlog. Wait, no connection? Vlog right now, vlog. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be. Okay, so we're trying to see if my vlog. new phone is connected with via Bluetooth yet. So what did you just order here at Chick-fil-A? Eight count chicken nugget meal. The, whatever I get here, whatever <laughs> chicken I get is always extra crispy, which means they double fry it. I know, bad for you. It's extra 45 seconds. I don't seconds. eat this type of stuff a lot, so it's fine. Yeah, so. nice. Yeah, then the other thing that I get is either like the Chick-fil-A sandwich deluxe with two slices of Colby Jack cheese, oh. extra crispy chicken, and lettuce and tomato. Nice. Um, nice. Yeah. And I do like my french fries extra crispy too. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. So, yeah. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Thank y'all. <laughs> I'm limited in my space. <laughs> you are. I'm limited. Okay. I'm limited. Okay. So, side note, this is really funny. My mom, every time she gets in the car, she has it on like a section like this, and she'll be like, like dancing and like stuff. And my sister, when we would go to school every morning, if my mom would even like go like this on the steering wheel, Elsa would be so embarrassed. She'd be like, Mom, stop dancing. Mom, you're supposed to be old and wear hammerings clothes. Why are you acting like a teenager? And she would get so upset. <laughs> How was Chick fil A? It was excellent. It was delicious. And it was their pleasure. It was. <laughs> Leg up. I need a refill. My pleasure. Watch, I'll be laying there with my eyes taped shut and I'll be like, Tish, I have to pee. Please let me out. <laughs> it happens every time. <laughs> Literally every time. Awesome. I was literally, literally when I was texting you, I was like, 
I can't even form the words to say to her because I'm speechless. Yeah, I'm right. never speechless. Yeah. But I was, spe- I mean, I'm still speechless oh, about I, that. I was so excited. Like, I went and got all my stuff and I'm like, <laughs> do it. I know. I literally, <laughs> that, like, I was sitting here like, look, okay, I've got you. It's fine. Yeah. Everyone else is just an idiot, yeah. apparently. Right. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I know. And I'm like, this, I'm like, this is going to work. I know it's going to work. I drove to. Well, I mean, it's Central. science. I got, exactly. It's literally science. Like, I know. Yeah, 7G. <laughs> 7G. <Seven goals. seven laughs> Yeah, that's my life. You're like, can I sell this gold, please, anybody? I mean, yeah. Like, why in the world is my hair the one head of hair that does the opposite? Okay, so I'm going to try to ask all the questions that possibly a viewer would be asking. So I'm going to ask you stuff that, of course, you know that I already know because I ask you a billion questions all the time anyways. Okay, so when looking for a lash extension specialist, Mm -hmm. what should someone be looking for? So they should look for someone who is certified through a reputable company. Mm -hmm. Um, If they can't present a certification, move on. Mm -hmm. They should be looking for someone who uses a good quality product. asking uh, the ingredients of the product. If they use, if they can't tell you the, the ingredients of the product, move on. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of lash adhesives are formulated with formaldehyde and you do not want that near your eye, so you need to find someone no. who chooses their products wisely mm-hmm. and doesn't mind paying for a high quality product. Yep. Um, and they need to be looking for someone who has a, um, a great portfolio whose lashes look like they want mm-hmm. their lashes to look like. I would agree. They can't present a portfolio that looks, you know, the way that you would be happy with your lashes looking. Okay, and what type of lashes do you um, suggest as far as like, you know, there's mink lashes, sure. there's synthetic, that type of thing. So I use a synthetic mink lash. There's a reason for that, a couple of reasons actually. It's different for every person though. So mm-hmm. the reason that I use synthetic mink is because they're more regulated. Mm-hmm. Mink lashes are going to be number one, much more expensive for the yep. client to get, number and they're two, a little bit lighter on the ends, correct? Yes, and they are very irregular mm-hmm. um, since it's not something that's actually correct. made. Yes. The other reason that I don't use synthetic or that I don't use mink is because um, that can also up the chances of an allergic reaction. Because Since they are actually animal. taken from an animal. Got it. Okay. Um, and then what type of maintenance um, would you suggest any client that gets lash extensions to, you know, go by? Like how often do you suggest that people come back? Um, how long typically do you recommend their appointments being? That type of thing. So that's very individualized, but mm-hmm. on an average you're looking at about a two to three week fill-in rate. Um, however, depending on the quality of work, it could be shorter or longer than that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not just about the work, it's also about the way that you care for these lashes at Mm -hmm. home, and it's about the way that your body responds to having an extension. Yep. Um, so there's that, and then, um, as far as maintenance goes, you just need to keep your lash line clean, no mascara, brush them out daily, if not most times per day, to Mm -hmm. keep them all beautiful and fanned out. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you have trouble brushing them out, you need to find a new lash artist because they're not properly isolating your lashes. Yeah. The other thing to really think about with maintenance is um, you want to make sure that the lashes that are being applied to your natural lash are not too long and too heavy for what your natural lashes can uphold mm-hmm. because it will affect the integrity of your lash. Right. So, for instance, um, you know, someone that has very dry, brittle lashes and doesn't have a lot of eyelashes to work with with their own lashes should not be getting as many or as long of ones that I have in. Correct. Yeah. Because most women's lashes are not as long as your lashes are. Right. They're not as thick as your lashes are, meaning like the diameter of your actual lash. Right. And so when we do extensions, um, we're thinking of, well, it, you should be thinking about, um, the diameter of the extension, the diameter of the, the the overall weight of the fan right. that I'm creating, and this is just for volume lashes, right. um, um, to make sure that I'm choosing choosing what is appropriate for your natural lash because at the end of the day, if your natural lashes don't grow correctly because they're constantly being tugged on, that's going to affect the lash. Eventually, extensions. you don't have you know the proper lash to adhere to anyway. Correct meaning that then you wouldn't really be able to get extensions. Right. 
Um, and then, you know, just a little bit about lash extensions. So there's different types of lash extensions that are permanent lash extensions that you can get. Can you um, explain the difference between the regular individual lashes versus the volume lash? Sure. So we're doing volume lashes today. Um, a volume lash is um, is my favorite. Is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my favorite too. It's an addictive. I'm able to do a lash. lot more for you as a client with volume lashes. Generally, the retention is better. Yep. And it's because of the way that the fan is formed. Um, every lash artist is going to form them differently, but the way that I do it works for me. And it's it allows the bottom of the fan to actually wrap around your natural lash, mm -hmm. forming a better bond. Um, and an, an individual um, lash is going to be one single lash that you put it here to one single natural lash and those come in different curls, different lengths, different um, sizes like diameters mm -hmm. so that's also the same thing with volume lashes they are you know different lengths, curls, volume, uh, diameters and you just have to choose someone and colors who, and curl colors yes so you have to choose someone who knows the appropriate you know even number of lashes to put into a fan yeah. There are so many things to think about the angle that they're put on, you know, what length do I use in the corner, what length needs to be used in the, you know, outer corner, in the middle, what shape do they want, what overall, you know, look right from the front do they want, and there are many different things to think about when, um, you know, creating a set of lashes. I didn't know this until I started getting lashes. Basically, your end result, of course, there's different things that you can choose about how you want your end result to look, but a lot of it is actually determined on how your own lashes are. Correct. For instance, like how curly your own lashes are, you know, mm -hmm. you can't put, you know, there might be someone that has stick straight lashes. Well, theirs aren't going to look as curly as someone that naturally has curly lashes because you're that, applying it to their natural lash. Exactly. And that also affects the retention. Yes. Um, there are lots of things that affect retention. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, you know, like you said, the, the makeup of the natural lash mm -hmm. can really affect the retention rate, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, oil content of yes. your skin, yes. um, the products that you use, mm -hmm. the climate that you live in, with humidity yep. and whatnot, um, the humidity in the room yep. when your lashes were applied. applied. Um, I mean, it, it's not just a, let me just stick these on your face. Like yeah. this is a, it's a science. And so it takes a long time for people to learn how to master it. And yep. do it well, the other thing that I'll mention is that in South Carolina, where we live, yep, <laughs> um, they have now downed the regulations mm -hmm. for lash artists. Really, as of last that's year. so scary. So oh. you don't even have to have a certification to legally do lashes in South that Carolina. That is so bad. Anymore. Do not go to some. You guys, I'm telling you, Tish has shown me some people that have come into her that have gone somewhere else. And like I told you guys in the car, I've been to multiple other locations, just, you know, not in my state because I don't ever cheat on Tish when I'm <laughs> able to go to her. But like if I'm, you know, in L.A. or I've traveled really far and I'm gone for like a month and a half or something, I might have to stop in one place. Tish is always the best, but she's shown me some really bad stuff where, you know, like she said, you've got to have one of your lashes with either one volume lash or one single lash attached to yours and it's isolated, which means none of the other hairs that are attached to, you know, your lash line or attached to that one hair. I've seen like 20 hairs clumped up and mm -hmm. just glue everywhere where people can't open their eyes. I mean, it it can be very, very bad. And, you know, you also have to be careful, like she said, with um, products that have formaldehyde because you can have a severe allergic reaction in addition to it being so bad for you. There's always a set of risks yes. when, you know, we're talking about using any type of glue, you know, product adhesive. in general. Yeah. I mean, yeah, your adhesive, I mean, even with think about skincare products, mm -hmm. you know, and you can have, um, you can have hives come out just from that, mm -hmm. um, depending on how sensitive you are. And so this is definitely the same thing. Mm -hmm. Much, it can be much worse. Um, the best lash artists in the world can still have people have reactions. Right. Cause they, really you have no that. control over exactly. that. Right. I mean, the control lies, the control as a lash artist lies with, again, good products. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, taking your time and making sure that you're not using and you know uh, an unnecessary amount of adhesive yes which is the i believe number one um most mistake common issue right with the sets that i look at and the sets that i have to yeah i would agree because you can if you can see the glue there's a problem 
And I, I never see the glue on mine. You, no. uh, you literally can look at mine as close up, and we'll get Bailey to do a close up at the end. You can look as close up as you possibly can, and you cannot see that it's. I mean, no one ever believes me when I say they're lash yeah. extensions. They're like, "No, what's your secret?" And I'm like, "No, really, you can buy these too. Like, yeah. I swear." Exactly. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, and then also, um, when I was talking about brushing through, like yes. I said, you know, if you can't brush through them, then move That's on to another lash artist. Yeah. That will really cause significant issues if you continue to get those types of extensions mm -hmm. um, because your lashes are filters and so therefore your lashes will hold on to um, uh, bacteria, you know, debris, um, oil, um, dead skin cells, and eyeliner those, girl, my yes, <laughs> exactly. And so those things are supposed to be rinsed out, supposed to be yes. cleansed, and so. Um, you want to make sure that you can properly, you know, rinse, clean, brush through the lashes, yes. so that um, you know you're able to reduce the chances of having a, an allergic reaction. So there are things yeah. that you can do as a client, but then things that I need to do as a lash artist as well. Yep. And I mean, when I first started, the first couple of types of glue that we used probably two different kinds. I think um, yeah. my eyes would get a little bit red. Um, but now we have like the perfect one for me and I never have any problems. Yeah, and this has really been my favorite glue for yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it works really good and I, um, and I think Tish mentioned this a minute ago, but I have a very good retention rate, meaning I don't really have to come quite as often as most clients have to come. Um, and mine don't fall out nearly as often as other people's do. Um, but part of that is, I think, the way that I take care of them at home. Um, Every single day I have a mascara one that doesn't have, of course, any mascara on it. And I, you know, run through them. I don't, when I first get them done, I don't get my, anywhere around my eye area wet, um, probably for 48 hours. Um, and the reason I do that is just because with regular permanent hair extensions, um, you're not supposed to do that either. And I really feel like that helps it to be all the way dry right. through and through before it ever gets wet. Um, yes. From the internal yes. bond. And the day that I come to Tish, um, just like today, this morning when I cleanse my face, I cleanse over my lashes really, really well to make sure that there's no oil, there's nothing that's going to work as a barrier in between the lash and the glue. And I think that's very important. I think a lot of people, you know, pile mascara on the lash extensions and you don't need mascara on the lash extensions. Yeah, if they're being done correctly. I mean, you know, if I were going to like go to the Grammys again or something like that, I might put a little bit on the tips of them, but I don't, I mean, very rarely do I ever put any on the top. Now, maybe the day before I'm coming, I would. Yeah. Because, you know, they're getting a little bit sparse or whatever. Well, and the other thing, too, to think about, I think a lot of people think, you know, oh, these look great. I don't right. need to come for as long today. Right. Uh, no, that's the opposite. Right. <laughs> um, you, uh, in order to maintain to keep a, a, you know, an even looking lash yes. and not come in looking like spider legs. Yes. Not that, not that they really should look that way, but just to keep them even, yes. I always tell my clients, you have to stay ahead of the, the loss curve. Yes. Like, um, you don't want to wait until you're like, oh my gosh, Janky. I'm so in need of a film. Yes. Um, you want to come in when they still look good. Yep. And that helps me as a lash artist be able to not only reapply, it helps me to um, um, keep them looking good. All the time. More so than I need, so that when you have a lost cycle of your natural lashes that shed, that we've already We still have other ones that are covered. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. Mine really never get very sparse looking I don't I don't right. think do you no I mean I think that I mean when I travel every when once you, in a while when I'm gone for like six, six weeks, weeks yeah like, <laughs> yeah but um you know we just do a two-hour fill and yeah get you right back to where we need to be I'm gonna yep. take a few off over here that have lasted really really well and do you re also one more question just mm -hmm. um let's say someone had been getting lash extensions and now they're deciding to take a break wouldn't you suggest they go into their lash specialist and allow them to take them off instead of them trying to do it at home? Or so I actually don't recommend that, and mm -hmm. here's why: okay. I've never removed a set of lashes mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. um, that's just one more product. The the remover is just one more product to stick on your face. And it's pretty harsh, probably. Yeah. So here's what I would suggest. This is what I tell everybody that ever has decided. You know, they can't get them. They can't afford them. Whatever the reason is. Mm -hmm. um, 
massage your eyes with oil mm -hmm. in the morning and at night and that oil is going to break down the adhesive mm -hmm. brush through them like you know you regularly would mm -hmm. um, and then when they start to look a little janky then you can start putting mascara on and then remove your mascara with oil again at the end mm -hmm. of the night um, and that will continue to break it down no they're not all going to fall off but the oil will help um, it. encourage the the bonds of the adhesive to release would you say that you could put the oil on like a little bit of oil on at night and sleep with the oil on oh absolutely yeah. i would use coconut oil is what okay. i can really tell people okay um yeah because that's going to be safe near your eye yeah. more safe than other oils i have never had <clears throat> One person call me and say, I don't want these anymore. Like, you know, I want these all off. Now, I've had people that have had to stop coming for sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, job loss or they're moving. Sure. And therefore, they're not going to be able to continue, sure. you know, coming to me and they don't want to have to try to find someone else. Mm -hmm. So they'll just generally naturally let them fall off. Gotcha. Okay. Um, that's really what I suggest because I just think it's better for your eye. And, and then it lets your natural lash grow um, under like lets it grow out before you're yes. trying to remove it yes. and taking the chance of breaking the lash and typically does that take about one to two weeks probably it really depends i mean you know oh, you're it's changing depend, and everything. yeah and, and when you start trying to remove you know right if you start trying to remove it directly after the day after one, it's yeah, not it's gonna happen little, yeah it's gonna be a little tougher yeah um but yeah i mean i have some people that like like what i just took a um, an extension off your outer corner over mm -hmm. here and I was able to just separate. Uh, I didn't even feel it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just able to separate your lash from the extension because that mm -hmm. adhesive had gotten kind of old, mm -hmm. um, meaning that either the extension was going to come off in a few days or that lash was going to shut out. So one of the two. So I just went ahead and helped it along, and um, and your lash was still intact. It's you know totally fine, which is what you want under the extension. Yeah. You don't want you know broken lashes or no. things like that. You want them to. such a good job I mean what can I tell you even when I wake up I look bad but at least my lashes look good <laughs> they still look good every day when I wake up <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video guys make sure to go and subscribe to my channel and you can continue to watch me for even more beauty tips bye guys love you